Hi, my name is Wild Wally. This is a video to warn you that materials that I'll be using in my video may be hazardous. So please get the Wemis uh, hazard material data sheets and follow the required uh, safety rules for clothing, gloves, eye protection, breathing. Please be safe out there. You have a wonderful day. Live long and prospect. Hi, I'm Wild Wally. And this is going to be a continuation of the microwave oven that I converted into furnace, forge, smelter whatever and we're going to be smelting some more metals or metals today uh, we're going to first try melting them down with uh, propane and map gas and the ones that we can't melt down that way we're going to use the furnace or the smelter and make ingots out of them We'll also melt these other ones in, in the furnace too, just to show you uh, how easy it is and uh, what, what, what methods uh, are required to do that. So, I'm going to start by going through some of the metals we're going to do today. And I'm going to be freehanding the camera, so bear with me while I take it off the tripod and uh, be right back. Well, these are some of the ones, the metals that I've already done uh, with the furnace smelter. Yeah. <clears throat> We've got uh, some, uh, let me bring this in a little clearer. We've got lead here. This is zinc. <clears throat> and this is aluminum. That's silver. The silver I actually did with a torch, a map gas torch. And we got bronze. And we got brass. Bronze is redder than brass. Brass is more yellowy. And then copper. Okay, and there's a few of my crucibles that I use. And this is my sample dish. <coughs> so we're gonna try melting today, or we're gonna we're going to with the with the smelter or refinery. We're going to do some brass in there. In there, you can see some brass fittings and some brass on this uh, sink uh, tap. And then we're gonna do some uh, aluminum and bronze. Okay, so. This is aluminum. This is a canister I found out in a forest fire that had been uh, where that had been the bush, the trees that were burnt about two years before. I was uh, stomping around in there, and uh, this was uh, for uh, a canister they use for uh, making a fire guard. It actually starts a little fire, so they can make a perimeter fire as a guard, so the other fire that's burned the trees can't go by there there's nothing to burn so I found this in there it's all bashed up they threw it out of an airplane uh, it's no good it leaks right there and uh, so that the main body of it is aluminum the top cover here is brass nice thick piece of brass you can see the difference between brass I mean not brass excuse me that's bronze Difference between bronze and brass. <coughs> right, right there. Okay, so this here is also bronze. The top here. Top. This here uh, pipe, I've uh, scraped it with a 
the file a few places and I think it's steel because it's awful shiny silvery color uh, the tip nozzle there looks like it's brass I don't think it's bronze and mainly the rest is uh, steel components uh, I believe I scratched yeah I filed this part down too it's holding the pipe and that together and the nozzle together and it's uh, silvery so it's not brass but we have uh, brass here brass uh, excuse me and it's not bronze or brass sorry so that's possibly brass there this here is bronze that part down there is bronze sink top is brass and of course all these fittings are brass Okay, now this here the mini oil gun uh, uh, trigger or, or yeah, trigger. The top part here, right here, that could be zinc. I'm not 100% sure. Zinc's very hard to tell apart from aluminum and uh, lead. Well, Lead it is, it's easy because lead's much heavier, but aluminum and zinc can be tough items to tell apart. So, just going by the color of this, I would say that this is probably zinc. The zinc seems to be a darker gray uh, uh, when it's out. In, well, maybe it isn't zinc because zinc usually corrodes white and it is a coating for mostly for a lot of metals, you know. Uh, not an alloy, but a coating to help the metal underneath uh, last longer and not corrode itself. Now this is, uh, this is probably aluminum or something like that. Well, another thing that helps is uh, this here. See, that's not sticking to the magnet. Even this neodymium magnet, it's not sticking. So it's either aluminum or zinc. Whoops. Now the handle part, that sticks pretty good. Let's see about this here. Oh yeah, that's definitely steel. This is aluminum. All right. Bronze, brass. None of these are magnetic, simply because aluminum is not magnetic, zinc's not magnetic, lead isn't, bronze isn't, brass isn't, neither is copper. Okay, so, and we got a little lead weight there, we're going to be melting down with the torches just to show you how well it melts. And uh, we got these batteries here. Now, I was under the assumption before that car batteries had uh, carbon poles at each side, negative and positive, and they had plates in them. And uh, the plates were in the order of lead, zinc, lead, zinc, lead, zinc, or zinc, lead, zinc, lead, zinc, lead, right through the whole battery. But I uh, guess I was wrong because uh, uh, looking and researching everywhere on the internet does not say anything about about uh, zinc being in any of the bat car batteries wet cell or whatever kind of battery you want to call it. Now these dry cell batteries, <coughs> which there's assortment of, you know, from A's and triple A's, double A's, and uh, six volt, and uh, D batteries, and even got nickel cadmium battery over here. But anyway, these are all, all different again too. So, I started out with uh, the D battery, and here's a D battery right here, and you see it picks up really easy. The canister picks up. I watched a video. It said uh, that uh, under the cover. Of the battery 
was a steel container and then under that there was another container that was supposed to be zinc and then in from there then there was an electric light electrolyte like that stuff that black stuff and uh, carbon rod okay carbon rod well this battery here totally different they tore it apart it's a uh, it's a metal shell I think so steel or I'm pretty sure it's steel I don't think it's tin and um, then it's encased in the electric light electrolyte inside it in the circle and then it's got paper inside as well as along the outside no, it was just inside and then a carbon rod in the center and actually actually not and excuse me not a carbon rod but a zinc rod so oh. where is it it's here he's here These little rods here or in the center of that battery or those batteries like it Okay, so I can take one of these. Take the battery. And shove the rod. It won't go in now because it's bashed up a bit. But the rod just simply goes in. In like that. And that I think is zinc because it's totally non-magnetic but as you can see the battery this shell is is magnetic and these are not magnetic okay so now <clears throat> what I did find was a D battery I'm going to open these for us in a bit the one that was a D cell battery I did find that was described in the video was this one here and it had the carbon rod and it's not magnetic at all so it had a steel shell no it didn't really even have a steel shell it just had that for a shell under the plastic uh, label coating and then uh, a bunch of this electrolyte, electrolyte carbon inside uh, or whatever it is and uh, and then the carbon rod Okay, now the best ones for producing for getting zinc from were these uh, six six volt batteries. These ones here. Um, they have basically four batteries like, like that in them, except they're longer. And these are definitely cased in zinc. And this is some of the zinc that come out of them. They have a top that is at the top of them is uh, this metal piece right on the top, right there. That one, right there. That was steel or whatever. But the rest is definitely just zinc. And the little copper connector wire. Okay, copper connector wire down over here. A little blue wire. And yeah, there's four of them inside one of these six volt batteries. I guess one and a half volts each. So, and of course, the wire connector wire in the top, top springs, those are metal, steel. Okay, but anyway, this is the copper top, and I pulled that apart, and I thought it would have a little rod like those up there in it, and I guess it's called a copper top because it has a copper rod. There's no zinc in that thing either, and that's all. Here's my magnet. That's all just tin, steel, whatever. There's no zinc in that battery whatsoever. No wonder they don't last very long. 
I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, then we're going to try melting some of them. Well, whatever we can. We're going to start first with propane. Then we're going to go to map gas. And then uh, we're going to go and do the same thing out in my uh, homemade uh, microwave oven smelter or forge. Okay, so on this part, I'm going to be right back. Okay, so let's uh, start going up the scale of what's easiest to melt and what's until it gets to a point where we can't melt anything with these torches. So, the easiest things to melt or has a low melting temperature is lead. You throw that in. You can actually even melt lead on your stove. We're going to change over to the propane bottle. Map gas is uh, map gas. It's way too hot for lead. We don't need that much heat. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just a waste of uh, waste of gas. Yeah. And I'm going to take off my mask. Don't really need it for this. You can. I mean, some people say <clears throat> it gives off toxic gas, but I've melted a lot of lead and I'm still here, so I don't have cancer or anything like that. To my knowledge yet. Yeah, so watch the lead now. Lit. <clears throat> now this is zinc. Zinc from those battery cases. This is still on propane. Much snow. Don't know what might be in there. Better not take any chances.
that melted pretty easily. We're going to melt aluminum now. Oh, by the way, according to these charts here, uh, Lead melts at uh, 621 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 327 degrees Celsius. The zinc melts at 419.5 degrees Celsius and 787.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, so that's lead 327 and zinc 419 Celsius. And uh, lead 621 Fahrenheit and zinc 787.2 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to do aluminum. All right, let's see what aluminum is just before we get started. So aluminum is uh, 659 Celsius and 1218 Fahrenheit. So that's quite a jump. So let's see if we can melt aluminum first with propane and then with the map gas if we can't do it with propane. Okay. I don't know if any of this aluminum is uh, alloy or what. But this is from a aluminum sign. This is a black painted black dyed aluminum heat sink from a computer component and this is uh, just aluminum heat sink from a computer motherboard okay let's uh, start up the gas and put the glove on first and I've melted this before and I haven't had to use a face mask for it. So this shouldn't be too bad for fumes and that, except maybe the paint. There we go. melting off that piece. I shouldn't say melting, the paint's burning off of that side. One side of it's got the old paint on it.
the metal sign was melted easier than what the heat sinks are. Propane was almost at its limit there at that temperature, 1200 degrees. Let's try the map gas now. Too big a chunk to really melt that Seems like there's some kind of alloy in there that's, uh, I don't know, is it an alloy or it's just not hot enough?
Good. So we're up there too. Twelve hundred and eighteen degrees Fahrenheit. So the next thing to uh, get to is uh, bronze. Bronze melts at 1675 Fahrenheit, 913 uh, Celsius. Process is at 1700 or 913 for bronze and 927 Celsius for brass. Now let's try bronze. Okay, Mr. Bronze. Alright, so we're going to try this thing. I don't think we're going to melt it all, but I'm going to try. At least melt some of it. With propane first and then map gas second. If we can get it to melt a little bit. It well, that doesn't get hot enough for bronze. Okay, so the next thing we're going to try is 
grass. Let's try burning that up and out that button. When you're trying to do things, experiment. Do your own smeltering and recovery salvaging. Sometimes it costs a bit before you can get a bit. And you have to sacrifice certain things. So, unfortunately this fitting is going to be sacrificed. Or maybe not. Depends if the propane or the map gas can even melt it. original look in the fitting. Starting to look more coppery now. More bronze like.
nice and red hot. of bronze on one side and on this side brass, hard to say. Well, anyway, so. again. On this list here, it says a copper. Melts at 1981 degrees Fahrenheit, 1083 degrees Celsius. So we went from 1700 brass Fahrenheit. Now we have to get to 1981 for copper. Fahrenheit or brass 927 Celsius. Try to get to 1083 Celsius for copper. And gold is just under copper at 1945 Fahrenheit. Remember, copper is 1981. And in, and in Celsius, gold is uh, 1063 and copper is 1083. So if we can melt copper, then we can melt gold, and we can make gold ingots. Silver is down there a ways. It's just under copper at uh, 1761 degrees Fahrenheit, or 951 degrees Celsius. So gold is 19. 45 and silver is 1761 Fahrenheit or 
Gold is 1,063 Celsius, and silver is 951. Okay, so, uh, oh, nickel. Oh, nickel's way up there. It's too high for me, I think, to even get on my, uh, micro homemade microwave uh, oven uh, refinery or smelter or forge. <laughs> Well, I'll try it after. So, anyway, I'm going to try copper here and see what happens. And I'm just going to go right to the map gas. Well, actually, I'm going to do the propane because I want to run that propane bottle dry. dry or empty, whatever, whichever way you'd like to say it. So I need a new base for my rock crusher. The other one fell apart. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can empty this and see if it'll fit underneath. Propane on copper pipe. Well, that's going. I can also try cut the wire. Well, you can tell that that's copper because it's got green flame. Okay, we'll change this over to map gas.
little chunks are red hot already. charcoal and it's nowhere near as expensive as this. I'm going to shut this off and then get set up in the backyard. We're going to do a bunch of spelting there with the furnace. 